Okay, so Thursday morning. Waiting for the repair guy to come and change our hot water tank. It's leaking, so we need a new one. We actually have an older house built in the 90s, I believe. I don't know how long this hot water tank has been here, but it's ready to blow. So we need a new one. Uh, yeah. So ambassadors of peace, that's what we are. We're not in conflict with any human being. We do not fight flesh and blood. We wrestle with spiritual forces of wickedness, sovereignties, world mites of this darkness. That's what we're wrestling with. We're defending. We're in a defensive, right, in Christ. We're not in an offensive one where we're actually going out seeking out Christians to battle against because we aren't. Um, we just expose them for what they are. Martin does a bang-up job. He does an awesome job. I thank God he's been called to expose the hypocrisy of the Christian religion. Um, we're not popular in this world because our truth is truth. Um, and it includes every single human being, every single celestial being, every single being, period. The whole of creation, the universe itself will be reconciled back to God through Christ so our celestial strife is not with blood and flesh as soon as we seek to enjoy our allotment among the celestials by faith we enter the scene of unceasing strife carried on with skillful strategy the stratagems of the adversary and spiritual force the spiritual forces of wickedness among the celestials this is what we wrestle with and we wrestle with them. It's not a, a, a full onslaught by us. They attack us. We defend the truth. We stand in Christ. If the marvelous revelations of the previous portion of this epistle have been apprehended, two matters of much moment have emerged. Number one, on earth we have no interest with conflict with any man. Number two, we have no allotment here to form the basis of a quarrel. Palestine is not for us, hence we have no clashes with the Arabs who claim it. Yet just as the dispossessed Palestinian Arabs resent and resist the presence of the Jews to whom God has appointed the promised land of Palestine, so the celestial powers oppose our appearance on their possessions. They do not like us. Moreover, no world power has, given, has been given a mandate over the celestial territory to help us retain our rights. Each one must hold his ground and defend the plot which is allotted to him single-handed and alone. In the coming administration of God's indignation, the adversary will come down to earth to be a roaring lion to the remnant of Israel. Why does he single them out, up, out for his prey? Because he is well aware that earth sovereignty, which he has held for more than seven millenniums, has been given to God's anointed, which is Israel, and that his people Israel will administer his government when he, he ascends the throne. The same motive now impels the spiritual forces of wickedness among the celestials in their opposition to the ecclesia, which someday will displace them in their celestial sovereignty. They know, they know far better than the saints what our presence implies. It is a plain intimation that their sovereignty is succumbing to the assaults of Christ. It heralds the hour when their hold on the heavens will cease. They will do their utmost to keep us from the enjoyment of our allotment. They're doing this now to the saints. They're beating us down through other human beings that are duped out. Even members of the body of Christ are coming against each other. What do you call that? That is assaults from them spiritual forces. How well they seem to have succeeded. Yeah, few indeed of the saints even know they have a celestial allotment to defend. They're like a Jew who has never heard of Palestine. Some deny our title to any celestial allotment. They're like those Jews who prefer the Argentine or some other place in the patrimony of their fathers. A few, very few in spirit, hold celestial property. 
even these are not well equipped and suffer for lack of armor suited to the conflict. It is to these that we address ourselves. If by fate they have acquired the celestial homestead which is presented in the first chapter of this epistle, then they have also come into the possession of a feud which will cost them many a defeat if they are not prepared for its defense. Do not let the stratagems of the slander shift your stand to earth, your focus to earth. Your stand is a celestial stand. It's a, it's a celestial calling, not a terrestrial one. Do not allow his fiery darts to slip past the shield of faith. Remember, Though you have been saved from your sins and are being saved from your sin, you still need salvation in the celestial spheres. So know what's coming. Believe and stand in Christ. Grace and peace.